scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please keep standing. We're reading the whole of Psalm 111, just 10 verses. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation verse 2 let's go together the works of the lord are great sought out of all them that have pleasure therein verse 3 his work is honorable and glorious and his righteousness verse 4 says he hath made his wonderful works to be remembered the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He had given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. Verse 6. He hath shown his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. Two more verses. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever, holy and revered. Verse 10. hallelujah i welcome you in the name of jesus to our miracle service for the month of may by by this salutation i'm prophesying to you that congratulations will never end in your life it will be from one level to the other in the name of jesus christ Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 20 21 now unto him that is able to do hold on hold on hold on hold on it is possible that you can come to him who is able to show you who has the power to do you can come to him who has compassion but cannot do but the Bible says now unto him that is able to do it is it is encouraging and it is a testimony enough to know that I have come to him who is able to do but then the Bible says he is able to do exceeding abundantly this is where my testimony comes in because if he is only able to do 
there are things I can do, but maybe what you need, I cannot do. So I need to know how far the doer is able to do. And the Bible says, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. It says, according to the power that works within us. 21, to him, it says, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all hallelujah in the name of Jesus may tonight be a memorable one for us may this be that night where you will know that you've always come for meetings you've always come for programs even miracle services but that this night God decided to shine his light on you in the name of Jesus Christ Please be seated. God bless you. Appreciate everyone for making it a date with Jesus tonight. May the Lord bless you all who are connecting from across the globe. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. The Lord will do us good. And for all our international guests and all who have come from outside of this city, May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Particularly, I would want to honor our Father again. It's an honor to have him every time with us. Bishop Onugogu, Daddy, thank you. Thank you so, so very much. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight is a miracle service, and that means it is all right to expect anything and everything from the God of heaven hallelujah a miracle service is a meeting that gives us the opportunity to experience the power the grace the wonder walking ability of the Spirit of God there are two scriptures I just want to give us a charge and then we'll pray my heart is heavy with so many things that I believe the Lord wants to do tonight and I want you to be very very sensitive hallelujah as I walked in and I sat down the Lord just put a very strong burden in my heart even before um, I begin to teach how that honestly if no matter what you have in life if you never get to a point in your life where you make a definite commitment that your heart and your everything is for jesus there are three people now the power of god is coming on just hold them you don't have to bring them out just help them i just saw this but listen to me just just pay attention We'll begin the ministration of the word shortly three people i saw this in my vision now your commitment your heart listen carefully everything in this kingdom starts with jesus not just god jesus because god means many things to many people the foundation for all and of all that we do is our love and our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and it matters there are several people here outside and following online we cannot emphasize it enough that the ultimate blessing in the life of a believer is not just healing it's not just deliverance it's not just breakthrough but a definite encounter with the Son of the Living God no matter what you have no matter what you receive and my goodness you would so receive tonight but no matter what it is that you have please listen to me the foundation for an excelling life that's why this song meant a lot for me it says the resurrected king is resurrecting me on my own part i have to admit that he's the resurrected king I cannot see him as a stranger, the founder of a religion, and then I want to receive from him 
and not want a relationship with him. You see, you can go and meet somebody, say a herbalist or some sorcerer. He does not need a relationship with you. All he needs is your heart to be opened. You can meet a sorcerer who does not know your name. You can meet a spiritist who does not know. Relationship is not mandated to receive from them. All you need to do is obey whatever they tell you to do. But when you come to Jesus with your hands, he will shift your hand gently and touch your heart. He will tell you what I need is your heart first. When I find your heart, then your hands will never be empty. Are we together? Yes. You know, most times, because of the charismatism that is around the move of the spirit, healings, deliverances, breakthrough, we tend to exalt those things as more superior miracles to salvation. The Bible already taught us from the life of Jesus himself. When he came, he, someone was looking for healing and he says, your sins be forgiven you. He said, which is greater? Are we together now? And it taught us a lesson there that in order of priority, the salvation of a man is by far superior. Everybody who Jesus raised from the dead still died again. Everybody who was killed in Jesus' meeting, probably through old age or whatever, they faded out. But the one thing that could not fade was their relationship. Part of the people who said, men and brethren, what do we do? I am sure that they were part of Jesus' crusade. And yet their needs never ended until they met him. He told the woman at the well, he says, I can give you living water. You will fetch this one and still come back again. But there is the living water that I can give you. This one does not just quench a temporal test. It will quench an eternal test. You have come with prayer requests. You have come trusting God to heal, to deliver, and this is why he's brought us together. But let me tell you this. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, cries for a genuine encounter, a relationship that is greater and bigger than money, greater and bigger than miracles. Please let me have your attention. Greater and bigger than whatever it is that life can offer. Are we together? A miracle service only becomes useful if the relationship with Jesus is intact. And there are people who can come and receive from Jesus, learn his principles, receive the anointing, receive impartations. You can return with wonderful testimonies of things that happen and yet never have a functional relationship with Jesus. Let me take it a step further. It is possible that you can come to, for an altar call and yet not be born again. It is not coming out. Coming out is just a sign to bring you out as a show of genuine brokenness and repentance. Because there are people who when we make the altar call, they only come and stand here when we are saying amen. Amen does not save you. Amen means let it be so. But it is your confession. Are we together now? The Bible says the word is nigh thee in your heart and your mouth even the word of faith that we preach that if you will confess the lordship of jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead there is something exact you have to believe about jesus to save you not every information about jesus culminates into eternal life if you believe jesus is a good man that is wonderful but it will not save you if you believe that Jesus was a wonderful and nice man, the founder of a religion, it does not save you. You must believe that he is Jesus, the crucified, Jesus now exalted Lord and Christ. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3 and verse 37. Acts chapter 3 and verse 37. Or 237 really. Let's look at 237. Acts chapter 2 and verse 37. Now when they heard this, this was the day of Pentecost, they were pricked in their heart and said unto one another and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what should we do? 38 now. He says, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. How many of you? Everyone who needs, if you are asking, what do I do with my life? I receive deliverance, it comes back. I receive deliverance, spirits come back. It may be that you are not saved. 
for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost verse 39 it says for the promise what promise the promise of salvation first and the blessing of the spirit that follows is unto you and to your children and to all them that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call so my first concern tonight is the salvation of your soul and then for others a the determination to start a genuine functional relationship with jesus now it doesn't matter how it has been before now the most important thing is that you see today is a powerful gift today gives you dominion over yesterday today is a gift that no matter how or what yesterday was if God gives you the gift of today then he has given you an opportunity to make it right apostle I heard the altar call last week somewhere but I was not willing to come out because I just felt that um, this Jesus thing I don't want to be a fanatic unfortunately the Bible tells us that only those who believe in Jesus Christ and receive him by faith that they are the only ones who are recipients of eternal life I think this is a good place to do the altar call before we even start ministering. There is no living church that is alive and serving the purposes of God sincerely and walking in compliance with the principles of the kingdom that God will not continually add every time as many as should be saved. God does not send as many as should be built first. It is as many as should be saved. When they are saved, they can now be built and discipled, mentored and empowered. Many of you came here tonight because your life, respectfully speaking, is, is in a complete mess. There is absolutely nothing working in your life. And you are saying, if for any reason God can make any sense out of my life, then I am here. There are others who are saying, Apostle, I do not even have a definition for my life. As I'm standing or sitting here, whether outside and even following online across the globe, you're saying, Apostle, as I'm listening to you, the Holy Spirit is telling me that my relationship with Jesus is faulty or not even there. It matters to Jesus Christ that if we desire to see his power, we desire to see his glory, then he must be exalted. He says, and I, if I be exalted from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. Hallelujah. So there are people here seated. As you are listening to me, the Holy Spirit is convicting you. And he's telling you that the time has genuinely come the time has sincerely come for an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ the time has come for you to win that war of destiny the time has come for you to start a journey a journey that redefines your entire life and it has nothing to do whether you are young or old rich or poor exposed or not male or female it does not matter it says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus it says that everyone that believes in him should not perish that means you are not supposed to perish you can choose to perish but you should not perish not after the new and living way has been made available for you it says but have life everlasting verse 17 we'll read to 18 17 says for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved our first message to the world please look at me men of God hear this believers hear this our first message to the world is not mental development our first message to the world is not principles 
our first message to the world is not organization our first message to the world is not miracle signs and wonders our first message to the world is salvation through faith in jesus christ other messages will now find relevance only if that message has been sorted out if we are asked to bring one message that represents the entire theme of the christian experience it is not just spiritual growth in fact it is not even kingdom it is jesus kingdom only finds its relevance when jesus is there are we together now so this issue of jesus is a serious issue and tonight god is speaking to us for some of you you will find out do you know that there have been many times in my life and the bit of my work with god I have seen that many people's cases and situations automatically get answered at the point where they come to surrender to Jesus. You've seen people fall under the anointing here while they are making the altar call. Because that is the one thing the Spirit, if the Spirit does not stop you or cannot stop you from receiving Jesus or coming to church, it will allow you to receive whatever miracle but make sure this jesus part just go back still with your heart empty because the spirit knows that it will have a legal access to return to your life again it will find it swept clean but empty it found it empty that was why it found access in the first place hallelujah let me make an altar call right now two sets of people in one number one a brother a sister a mother a friend a son a daughter anyone who is saying apostle thank you for giving this opportunity i know that i am a defined i'm at a defining moment in my life i need jesus i have never truly made this decision for jesus consciously and then there are those who are saying apostle my life it is my life is in a state of emergency that is even why i came here i probably was invited by a friend and a brother and i need jesus christ because i know that i know that i know that my life has gone haywire there is no order i need jesus all of the overflows outside everywhere the basement right here in this auditorium and following across the nations of the earth i am not asking you if you are a christian i am not asking you if you go to church i am not asking you if they gave you a christian son name that's not what i'm asking and you know the beautiful thing about god is that nobody comes to force you but you know by the spirit that your destiny is crying out for jesus some of you need more than a miracle tonight some of you need more than a healing tonight it is jesus i'm going to make this altar call now and when i count one to five whether you are inside or outside if you are still thinking about it by now i consider you to not be serious because the holy spirit would have spoken to you from the depth of your heart i will count one to five one please run to jesus please take him seriously i want to come but i'm afraid of my friend I'm afraid of my family members. Please leave them alone and come to Jesus. This is a personal affair. Let's celebrate them as they come. Two. Yeshua. Ah, ah, ah.
listen let me tell you many of you here who are here at the point you are praying that salvation prayer you will be surprised that your deliverance will even begin even without going to that section this is the he said i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power it didn't say it has power it is the power of god unto salvation your declaration is closing that door permanently yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory Yeshua ah, 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 ah. Yeshua ah, ah, ah. Now listen please I'm going to lead you in a prayer as soon as i'm done with that prayer you will be the first that will start ministering deliverance to before you go lift your right hand to jesus if you're under the anointing or you're sitting you're on the floor no problem that's all right let me tell you this prayer of salvation bar is a deep and powerful mystery in the realm of the spirit you are not just reciting a poem a set of words that contain power and it will activate something in the realm of the spirit say after me very loud and very clear say lord jesus, lord jesus. one more time say lord jesus, lord jesus. Right, now, right now i believe, I believe that, you that you are the son of the living god i believe, I believe that you died for me i believe that you resurrected for my justification right now I receive eternal life into my spirit I receive you as my Savior I receive you as my Lord I receive you as my King I declare that the power of sin of Satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life the resurrected king is resurrecting me i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never now lift your hands let me pray for you i announce to every spirit every foul devil you had their confession and the bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue Therefore, I stretch my hands. Every manipulation of darkness right now, I speak as one sent in the name of Jesus. Let them go now. Go, go, go. Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. Release their destinies in the name of Jesus. Every legal access you have over their life, the blood of the eternal covenant speaks against you. Release them now. Release them now. Release them. Kaposh Ketebata. Curses, altars, yokes, hexes, spells. You come under judgment by reason of this prayer of salvation. I declare liberty in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit. It says, Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I declare, Be free now. Be free now. Be free now.
by reason of this decision everything that has been tied down over your life i decree and declare be released now be released now in the name of jesus congratulations for making this noble decision every single one of you it was not an ordinary confession believe me even if you've said it before you may not have said it with understanding but right now you have made a decision that will change the course of your life now here's what i want to you to do please all of you follow very carefully now i want you to move to my right there are counselors waving their hands they will attend to you very quickly and then you return please counselors let's okay um from here half of you those who are here please move to my left this way and then to my right very quickly those under the anointing that's all right um if you can't take them you can just leave them there hallelujah please attend to them very quickly so that they can join the service there is a lot for us to do tonight hallelujah praise the name of the lord look at the power of salvation the power of salvation tonight god is going to be healing and god is going to be restoring these two things among the many things that god is going to be doing there's going to be healing and restoration even by his spirit jeremiah chapter 30 please be seated if you can may god bless you jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17 this will be our anchor scripture for tonight hmm. jeremiah 30 and verse 17 please pay attention I will charge our hearts and then we'll get to the ministry of the Spirit. I see the stars, I hear the roaring thunder, thy path throughout the universe displays then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou Jeremiah. 30 and verse 17 let's read together please be very sensitive there is such a mighty and marvelous anointing of the holy spirit here for i will restore health unto thee and i will heal thee of thy wounds saith the lord because they call thee an outcast saying this is zion whom no man seeketh after hmm this is a prophetic word for someone i will restore health he never said i will heal thee of thy sickness because it takes more than sickness to need healing he says i will heal thee of thy wounds saith the lord why because they have called you an outcast saying this outcast even though he is called zion no man seeks after you may the lord grant us grace i want to define four four of these words the the power in this verse will only be released when we have 
the opportunity to study a few words you see let me tell you these words are very important and until you understand the deeper meaning of words you may just read powerful statements and it will not make any meaning to you there are four words i want to define number one health health god is healing listen very carefully his power is in his word what is the definition of health you may want to listen even if you are not writing health i wrote here is a state of complete physical mental and social well-being health is defined as a state of complete physical mental and social well-being not just the absence of diseases or infirmities that means that when we talk about health it is more than just the absence of diseases or infirmity that is a major definition of health but that in addition to the absence of diseases or infirmities it means a state of physical mental and social well-being is someone learning i wrote down here health in one word is liberty health in one word holistically defined is liberty if you want to define health in one word it's more than freedom from an infirmity health in one word is liberty second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17 second corinthians 3 let's work together media second corinthians 3 now the lord is that spirit it says and where the spirit of the lord is there is health there is health if you see health as something only sick people need you may never contend for it physical mental and social well-being in one word health is liberty freedom that means when you have the liberty you are healthy to the degree to which you have liberty one of the assignments of sickness is to constrain you is that true for instance if you have a problem with your limbs why do you call it an infirmity because it has now constrained you you do not have the liberty to do things as fast as you would want to do the assignment of ill health is to incapacitate you in some way and we're saying here that my definition of health in one word is liberty i have studied various definitions of health and i can tell you in one word health is liberty no matter how you define health if liberty is not captured in it then it is not health are we together definition number two the word heal or healing the second word we want to look at is the word heal all from jeremiah 30 and verse 17 i just thought to do the definitions and then the the richness in that scripture will come to you the next word is heal because that is what the lord said he would do so we need to know what is in his mind when god says i will heal thee what does he mean what does it mean to heal or to be healed to heal means to make someone or something sound and healthy again to heal means to make someone or something sound and or healthy again to heal means to make someone or something sound and healthy again another definition of healing to heal means to become mentally or emotionally strong after a bad experience to heal means to become mentally and emotionally strong again after a bad experience take note of these definitions to heal number one means to become sound or healthy again number two to heal means to become mentally 
and emotionally strong again after a bad experience take note of the words again again means something corrupted the initial state and now there is a need to go back again to become mentally or emotionally strong after a bad experience the third definition to heal means to restore back to an original or better state to heal means to restore back to an original or better state is that scripture making sense now to heal number one it means to become sound or healthy again number two it means to become mentally or emotionally strong again after a bad experience and then number three to heal means to restore back to an original or better state now you can see the scripture we're piecing this together very quickly for i will restore liberty are we together now unto you freedom access and i will heal thee of your now it makes sense with this definition why it didn't say i will heal you of your sickness if he had said sickness or infirmity then it will limit it to a group of people but he said i will heal you of your wounds that becomes our next definition in fact i didn't do justice to the last definition of healing to be restored back to a state of health vitality and optimism to be restored back to a state of health vitality and optimism now let's define wound w-o-u-n-d wound because god is saying that he is going to heal us of our wounds so what is he talking about a wound is an injury or damage to a part of the body an injury or damage to a part of the body that typically involves a cut a tear or a breaking of a membrane such as the skin don't worry i'll take it again that a wound is an injury or a damage to a part of the body that typically involves a cut involves a tear or a breaking of a membrane such as the skin that means in a wound there is usually a damage to a part of the body a cut a tear or some damage of your membrane like a skin the second definition of a wound is the harm done to a person's emotional and psychological well-being the harm done to a person's emotional and psychological well-being usually caused by one or more unpleasant events the harm done to a person's emotional and psychological well-being usually caused by one or more unpleasant events resulting to major levels of distress so a wound number one talks about an injury number two it talks about a harm that is done to a person's emotional or psychological well-being usually by one or more unpleasant events and it results to major levels of distress including fear frustration and the inability to make progress one last time because it's a long definition even if you are not writing just listen the second definition of a wound is the harm that is done to a person's emotional and psychological well-being are we together usually caused by one or more unpleasant events resulting to major levels of distress including fear frustration and the inability to make progress are you ready for the final definition 
the word outcast give us that scripture again we're building this so we see four words health heal wounds outcast is the final word what does it mean to be an outcast the verse defines it itself but let's give it clarity an outcast is a person who has been rejected full stop an outcast is a person who has been rejected another definition an outcast is one who has been denied acceptance an outcast is one who has been looked down upon or ignored pay attention to these definitions an outcast is number one a person who has been rejected number two one who has been denied acceptance three one who has been looked down upon or ignored isaiah 65 14 and 15. Oh, did I get that right? Let's look at 15. Give me 15. Okay. 14 and 15. Let me read it. This is scripture I'm looking for. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but he shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall... No, 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 no. And the Lord shall give you a new name. I'll, I'll, I'll look for the scripture. Which the mouth of the Lord... That's verse what? Isaiah 62. That should be 62. Am I right? Let's look at 62. Isaiah 62. Verse. Aha. Beautiful. It says, Thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Look, go to verse 14. There is an expression... 14 not one give us the entire 62 be patient let me read it i need to draw something out from there for zion's sake i will not hold my peace for jerusalem's sake i will not rest say amen until your righteousness thereof goes forth as the brightness and the salvation as a lamp that burneth verse 2 it says, Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and the kings thy glory. Thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Verse 3. It says, Thou shalt be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of God. Beautiful. This was what I was looking for. My apologies. 62 from verse 4 and 5. It says, Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken neither shall thy land anymore be termed desolate but thou shalt be called hefziba and thy land beulah it says for the lord delighted in thee and thy land shall be married verse 5 it says for as a young man married a virgin so shall the, thy sons marry thee and as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride so shall god rejoice over thee somebody say amen that you will never be termed forsaken but the lord will give you a new name in the name of jesus now please go to our initial scripture isaiah 30 and verse 17. jeremiah now 30 and verse 17. we're going to read it now are you ready one to read for i will restore health unto thee and i will heal thee of thy wounds saith the lord because they call thee an outcast saying this is zion whom no man seeketh after you now understand what the bible is saying that god wants to do many things in your life number one is to restore you to a state of vitality and liberty and then to bring restoration to leave you in the state you once were if you have de deteriorated and even a better state and then he says to heal you of your wounds all kinds of wounds physical wounds emotional wounds spiritual wounds because the bible says a broken spirit can dry up the bones and then he says where you have been an outcast rejected 
did I define an outcast okay yes I did another definition for an outcast is one who is made to believe that you do not fit into society by reason of certain standards that means people look at you and say you are poor they look at you and say you are not this they look at you and say you are not like us and they relegate you to the background because they feel that you do not have a voice you do not have the value that seems to qualify you to be part of certain circles whether in ministry whether in business whether in your life God is vowing tonight that he's going to change that narrative in the name of Jesus Christ now very quickly how do I experience the healing power of God we need to know what it takes now that we know that God wants to heal he wants to restore to an original and even better state what does it take to experience the healing power of God there are two keys I'm going to give you and then we'll begin to pray how do I experience the healing power of God number one are you ready the first key locate and stand upon the Word of God as it concerns your healing or whatever area of concern locate and stand upon the Word of God as it concerns your healing or whatever area of concern this is the first thing if you want to experience the healing power of God you have a responsibility to locate and stand upon the Word of God as it concerns your healing three scriptures very quickly number one Isaiah 53 and verse 5 Isaiah 53 and verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions the Bible says he was bruised for our iniquities it says the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his tribes we are healed Apostle Peter rend rendering this version says by his tribes we were healed so you have to locate what the Word of God says Psalms 102 from verse 2 and 3 In fact, let's start from verse 1. I hope I got that right. Please, if I didn't, look for it for me. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Making a mistake type. Okay, 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, verse 2, and forget not his benefits. Now, what are the benefits? Number 1, verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Are you seeing the protocol now? He starts with forgiveness, and then who healed all thy diseases. In fact, we add verse 4. He says, who redeemed thy life from destruction and then he crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies these are all called benefits so you must locate from the Word of God what has God said concerning my healing what has God said I have taught you countless times here dear people of God that the boundary of a believers commitment God's commitment to the believer is scripture scripture represents the jurisdiction of God's commitment to the believer hallelujah standing 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 on the promises of God my Savior standing I am standing on the promises of God. One more time. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God. Please look up let me tell you something about the Word of God 
until you can find it in scripture the each the verse and the scripture that directly addresses your area of expectation or your area of concern believe me there is no confidence that God is committed over that issue now for some of you you may say apostle I've searched my Bible and I don't seem to find anywhere where my particular case is mentioned I will show you that all the cases that you have that may not seem to be in the Bible there is a category where the Bible keeps them John 20 John 20 from verse 30 and 31 and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book so there are many other things that he did but are not written in this book your expectation qualifies to get into that list Lord I know that you can do it even though I did not see the particular issue I'm looking for here but the Bible says that you have done many things that were not written here but the good thing is that you did it and I'm releasing my faith that becomes the second key that I will receive this key number one locate and stand upon the Word of God as it concerns your healing or whatever area of concern are we together yes and then number two reach out and receive by faith reach out and receive your healing or reach out and receive whatever it is that you desire by faith regardless the prevailing symptoms reach out and receive by faith regardless the prevailing symptoms i put symptoms here because we're talking about sickness but it applies to whatever area hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 it says without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to god must believe that he exists and then that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so when we seek him sincerely trusting him to come through for us the bible says that he is a rewarder scripture number two in john chapter 5 john chapter 5 from verse 1 to 9 very classic rendition of how to reach out by faith the bible says after this there was a feast of the jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem uh-huh next verse now there was at Jerusalem at the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches look at the kinds of people that were there in these lay a great multitude of important folk of blind halt withered waiting for the moving of the water for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had look at this kind of thing and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years do you know the first thing about this story please go back to verse 5 i would have been concerned or I would have been less concerned if the Bible said there were certain people who stayed there very long the first thing the Bible tells us is that there was a multitude of important folk and then he now isolates one man and says that one man among the multitude had been there 38 years if he said there were 10 people or 15 people you will know that it was not unique to one man that means there was something wrong with this one man that multitudes will come and go multitudes will come and go but that one man remained there verse 6 when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case he said unto him watch this now will you be made whole that was a question watch the man's answer the important man answered and said sir I have no man when the water is troubled was that the question you see why the guy was there do you want to be healed 
he said i have no man when the water is troubled to put me into that means i am not willing to take responsibility over my action as powerful as the problem was not with the angel the problem was not with the water but for him to make the effort he did not know that in receiving from god you have a role to play and he said i'm just lying down there waiting for who will play my role for me and that waiting made 38 years of a moment of god's power can i tell you this every time you fail to do what god has empowered you to do as far as your own equation your own participatory role in obtaining from god is you will only prolong your pain and prolong your condition the angel came and stirred the water and yet the man said i have no man to put me into the pool do you know the kind of labor it takes to carry an impotent man and put him into the pool But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. That another that stepped down before him, was he the only important man there? The Bible says they were important men. Carelessness. And he just fell one day and he became 38 years. Look at the mercy of Jesus, verse 8. And Jesus said, all right, now I want to give you a chance to learn how it works. You would think that Jesus will hold him. Jesus said, rise. It was the same thing. Rise. Which one is easier? Roll or rise? I mean, you went to school. Roll or rise? Jesus comes and you would think the equation will change. Even if you meet Jesus, it will still take the same fate. Rise. Then take up your bed. At least if you fall into the water, you will not take up your bed. It's just to roll. Jesus said, rise. Take up your bed and walk. And finally, nine. So he had that ability. He always had it. It was a flimsy excuse he was giving. If that man could rise, then it means he would have been able to roll. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day and it was a Sabbath can you imagine that look at me please even if Jesus Christ the Son of the Living God appears here directly to replace me you would think just because he has come you will start rejoicing I assure you there will be people who will live without receiving anything to the point that you will suspect if, if this was Jesus or not because his coming will not push away the need for faith are we together now it will always take faith in the Word of God to receive you must believe that God has come through for you and then you take the corresponding action by faith. Romans chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19. The Bible speaking about Abraham says who against hope. Do you know what it means to believe in hope against hope? Against hope means that there were evidences glaring before him. That would tell him you may never have a child again for him and his wife sarah but the bible says against hope regardless the symptoms regardless whatever it is he believed that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken he did not just believe as he wanted he believed according to that which was spoken verse next verse 19 and be not weak in faith the bible says he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old neither the deadness of sarah's womb the bible says he considered not that's why i said you have to reach out by faith if you focus on symptoms you will never receive from god you have to learn to take your eyes away when peter looked at jesus he could walk on water but when he turned and saw how boisterous the sea was, the Bible says he began to sink. They looked unto him and they were not ashamed. Can I tell you this? 
I assure you by the God of heaven that God, like our dear people sang, is still the resurrected king and he's still in the business of resurrecting people. To resurrect means to bring you out of the grave. Every kind of grave. Reach out by faith. Reach out by faith. Apostle, I have come here. I'm trusting God for healing. Even in my finances. My own is that my finances, nothing is working. When the word of God comes, that God is able to bless you and to lift you. It is your responsibility to reach out by faith. How do you reach out by faith? Believing that God is able to step in and then finding out what, you, what role you need to play to release the power of God. In fact, let me give us a third key. The third key, if I'm to give us anyone here, will be expect the anointing to flow in response to your faith. Expect the anointing to flow in response to your faith. Because the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the power. It is the agency that actually brings the results. Faith is a means of connection. It connects you to the power of God. But the agency that does the work is the anointing, the power of God. Let's look at Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Let's start from verse 40. This is, I was so touched when our dear sister came and gave her, the, the lady with, with the issue of blood, and I looked at it and I said, can you imagine this kind of thing? You can imagine the kind of, the kind of discomfort that this would have left this lady in. But thank God for the power of God. Luke chapter 8 from verse 40. Are we there, media? The Bible says, And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Uh -huh. Next verse. It says, And behold, there came a man named Jarius, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he should come to his house. So the man is pleading that he would come to his house for he had only one daughter about 12 years of age and she lay a dying but as he went to the as he went the people thronged him next verse and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years you know what this means the day they gave birth to that child that was the day her problem started they were both 12 years the day that child was born while the mother was in the, the i want to say mortuary while she was in the delivery room giving birth this woman's trouble started all 12 years so which 12 years will jesus attend to it depends on who reaches both of them had 12 year old problems and you would think just because one is a little girl in the school of the spirit it's not about age. It is your ability to reach and believe. Please keep that scripture there. I want to teach you something very powerful. The Bible says while they were on their way going, a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed by any. 44. The Bible says came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood Verse 45. And Jesus said, this is where we are going to. Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and saith thou who touched me? In other words, this is a silly question, Jesus. There are so many people pushing at you. How in the world will you say that? And Jesus said, somebody had touched me. For I perceive Shalakatosiata. Many people were touching for various reasons, but I perceive that virtue, power, the anointing has gone out of me. There is a touch that places a demand. Look at this. That means it was possible for Jarius to have stood in even for the daughter and touched him immediately. 
he was talking with somebody for a long time and he said come to my house i believe that until you come to my house my child will not be healed that was the direction of the power of god it had to be activated when he arrives his house because his faith did not believe you'll be healed now but there was a woman who said i know you are passing my own is i don't have the power for any discussion i just need to touch you listen all 12 year old problems hear me you can believe god that your miracle will come december the power of god will go slowly and honor your faith till it gets to december you can believe that your increase will come from your salary and from your, god's power will work with the people in your office slowly until they start raising your paycheck but you can believe like the woman with the issue of blood she did not have a discussion all she needed to do was to touch but you see let me tell you this it was not an ordinary touch please give us that scripture it says somebody had touched me for i perceive virtue is gone out of me 47 when the woman saw that she was not hid she came trembling and falling down before him she declared unto him and before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately last verse 48 it says and he said to her daughter be of good comfort he didn't say my anointing has healed you your faith your all the discussions you said when you read mark's account the bible says she said to herself there was a contemplation that was happening there can i tell you this two people can have the same issue of sickness two people can have the same issue of finances and one person will push 12 year old child dying 12 year old woman with the issue of blood as far as pain is concerned and the longevity of the problem they were all 12 year old that means you would think that jesus will attend to the issues the same time because of the time it was whoever could reach one stood with jesus and was talking for a long time playing politics and negotiating jesus would you come another woman said i don't have time for that i know what it means to be in this condition all that is required to pull that virtue is faith the same way someone can be in here you are watching me and not receive but someone can be at the overflow or another nation like the woman with the issue of blood and said i may not be here but all i need is an opportunity to reach out i expect the anointing of the holy spirit will always flow in the direction of your faith the anointing of the holy spirit will always flow in the direction of your faith if your faith says next week the anointing says amen if your faith says now the anointing says amen if your faith says in 10 years the anointing says amen the assignment of the anointing is to say amen to whatever faith says the man was standing with jesus every part of him was dripping power and yet nothing happened because based on the construction of his faith he believed that jesus had to travel down until he got to his house and then to lay hands physically on his child and there was no point arguing jesus said okay that's fine let's go and then a woman said i'm do you know what it means to touch the hem of your garment this is it just to touch you like this you would think it's a breeze and jesus said no no among these many the same way there are many in koinonia now lifting their hands but there are others the lifting of their hands is not just to heaven alone it is to jesus and to his servant saying lord i believe and then i receive if i may but touch the hem of his garment the bible says immediately she was healed I've seen a bit of the power of God in my life and I understand a bit about the dynamics of the anointing by the grace of God. Do you know, I have traveled for meetings where sadly, I have seen certain people not touched and yet the, the major dimension of the anointing that flowed in that meeting was over those kinds of cases and why they were not touched, sometimes it would surprise me and then later on, 
you would be going out and find out that other people maybe security people or somebody out there will now call and say you cannot imagine what happened to me and i'm saying but it cannot be god god cannot be that unfair proximity to an anointing does not guarantee reception proximity to an anointing does not guarantee reception it takes a revelation of faith you connect to the anointing by faith if you have the privilege to have proximity to the anointing then you can receive but with or without proximity your faith can reach any part of the globe proximity to the anointing listen to me there is nowhere in this auditorium or outside or across the globe where the power of God cannot reach you can choose to be Jarius tonight and say apostle you have to come and walk let's go through that intellectual journey until we get to my house the only issue is that sometimes the concerns in your life may not allow that wastage of time it may be too late by the time he gets there but like the woman with the issue of blood it can happen right here right here right here Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Feel this place Shalanda Baratos Yada Ruach Elohim me for a man of God here yeah, tonight can be your night if you so wish Lord why are things not working ministry is not working there is no increase you have been wounded because it looks like you push your effort healing is coming for you if you can receive apostle my issue is not 12 years old my issue is 30 years old welcome to the one who is able to do able to do no matter how long When you meet him you meet his power to heal his power to deliver his power to change apostle i'm desiring a b c d can god step in for me yes the god of the bible i don't know what god you are talking about but if you mean jesus christ the one who is the resurrected king lord and christ i assure you it is within his power and tonight can be your night tonight can be your night tonight can be your night we're going to pray it will be such an extraordinary move of the spirit in this place listen the most important role that you have to play tonight is to reach by faith there is a buffet the table of his majesty is prepared and set before you for all kinds of healing financial healing emotional healing spiritual healing restoration of fire honor dignity favor you are tired of the workings of darkness in your life in the next one minute i'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart and make up your mind say lord tonight is my night like the woman with the issue of blood you came as a family agree as a family you came as an individual agree as an individual you came as a business agree come on lift your voice and pray talk to the god of heaven ruach elohim 
Hallelujah. There is such a mighty anointing of the Spirit here. Please listen. You are going to pray one prayer. Lord, in this miracle service, everything must work in my life. Must work in my life. Open your mouth and pray. Everything. Everything must produce results. Everything. Shalandegapata must produce results. Someone is praying. Everything. Everything. Shabra gade bagatos kate brende gade balata. Everything must produce in my life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everything that left heaven for my sake must land upon my destiny this night. Favor, increase, healing, restoration. Pray. Shebada kata brande gade balaka tosh kate brande. Skate brande bara tosh koto brata kata. if i may but touch the hem of his garment this issue can come to an end i know if i can but touch the hem of his garment he can come to me as the wisdom of god he can come to me as the power of god Pray one more minute. You're not wasting your time. You're releasing your faith. God is still in the business of lifting. He's still in the business of making. He's still in the business of empowering. He's still in the business of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Hello.
Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.